Hello again, I'm Kate Sylvia. Um, today I'm just going to talk a little bit about how to add a texture to an image to give it a little bit of a creative effect. I'm going to start with uh, this saucer magnolia here and just open it up in Photoshop. I'm working in Photoshop CC, but this will work in just about any version of Photoshop, including Elements, um, anywhere where you can do layers. Um, so right now I've got this uh, flower opened up and I just wanted to see what it might look like with a texture applied. So I'm going to go back to Bridge and I'm going to find a file full of textures, most of which that I have purchased online. There are many sources. You can go to uh, French Kiss textures, uh, flypaper textures, um, Melissa Gallo has some painted textures, wonderful stuff out there that's available, and you can also make your own just by going out and taking pictures of uh, hardwood floors and cement and brick and uh, cotton balls and just about anything uh, that has texture to it, uh, even skies and things like this. Uh, so what I would normally come in here and do is uh, choose a texture, just find something that I think might look good, uh, and so I'm just going to grab this one, open it up, and there it is. Now in uh, Photoshop and Elements you have the ability to combine photos so that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to select the Move tool by typing the letter V and it's also available up here in your tool menu and I'm going to click on my image and drag it. I haven't let go. I'm going to highlight the other photo. Still have not let go. I'm going to drag my cursor back to the middle and now I'm going to let go. Okay, so now I've got one image on top of the other. Now the images were not the same size, so I'm going to go Command T. There we go. And I get this bounding box. And the bounding box just needs to be brought in so that it matches the same size of the image. And then I'm going to just hit the check mark, or you can just click on Enter. And there we are. So now I've got this texture on top of that photo. If I remove this top layer right here where it says layer one, you can see the picture of the texture here and the background is still my photo. If I just click on that little eye, it shows me what's underneath. Now you can do multiple things here. You can change the blending mode. Here's darken, lighten. They all do different things. They're worth looking at. Um, I just do a quick run through for most photos just to see if it comes up with something interesting. Um, but this one I'm just going to hit uh, normal and just leave it on normal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask by clicking on this button right here. Add a layer mask. And I'm going to select my brush. Big one. And what I'm going to do is look at my opacity up here. That is the opacity of my brush. I'm going to set it at 100. So it all comes through. Now I can do that uh, quick shortcut just by typing the number zero and that automatically goes to 100. And I'm just going to start painting, making sure that my foreground color is black because I'm painting on white and that will allow everything behind to show through. And I'm just going to do this real quick right here. And then I might lower the opacity and again the, you can you can do the drop down right here and, and drag your slider or you can just type in a number 30 maybe 30 percent and I'm gonna go a little bit further and that just helps make a nice soft blend right there and so say I'm happy with that there we go there's before and after of uh, my texture now I'm going to do another one. Let's see. Let's do this one. Pineapple fountain. We'll close these others because we don't need them. Nope. Um, here I'm going to show you uh, something that is kind of unique to uh, Photoshop if you're a subscriber to the CC program, uh, which is the photographer's program, is called Adobe Paper Texture Pro. Now you can, uh, this is like a plugin, and you can load all of your textures in here so that you don't have to go back to Bridge and rummage through all those textures. So I have actually loaded all of these in here, 
and what you can do is select a blending mode. Now you can leave it at normal, but I actually like to leave it at overlay just so I can click on it, and what it does is it automatically takes that texture, it puts it in overlay mode, it creates a mask for me all in one step just by clicking on this check mark. Now if I pick one and I scroll through here, I can do uh, change it to color burn, change it to multiply, things like that. Um, but right now I'm just going to leave it on overlay. And if you don't like the way that one looks, because I really don't like that one, I'm going to check on the box again to remove it. And then I'm just going to keep going and try a few of these. Let's see. Oh, that looks interesting. And the nice thing about this is that you can come in here and uh, do several at the same time. Like I kind of like smoky dusk. That's what that one is called right there in the overlay mode, and so I might leave that, but I might actually say, well, what if I add yet another one? How about this one? Nah, maybe that one. And so here you can actually stack multiple effects on top of each other, say I like this. Now this one I can change the blending mode, hard light, soft light, something like that. Maybe multiply, that gets really dark. Screen, really bright. And again, normal with a brush. I could do the same thing like I did before. Brush that out, maybe 30%. I'm just playing, anyway. Uh, but the Adobe Paper Texture is uh, a neat thing to have. I'm going to get rid of that one. I actually like the original. I like this. Not bad. Um, but yeah, if, if you have a, a subscription to Photoshop CC, um, it's a it's a really nice benefit and then again that's Adobe Paper Texture Pro. I believe you have to have the um, Adobe Exchange plugin in order to get that one to work. All right, let's get out of here. I'm going to do one more thing. And I'm going to bring in this little girl and dove wings. Okay. So here I have a nice little portrait of a girl walking. And so what I'm going to do is, now this is dove wings, but I'm going to go ahead and, and, and change this before I put it on my photo because there's something that I want this texture to do. And so first I'm going to rotate it so that I'm now dealing with a vertical. It'll just be easier to, uh, to stack them that way. But I'm also going to um, add some contrast and I'm going to do a levels adjustment and all I'm going to do is add some contrast to this before I use it. There's nothing saying that you have to use textures the way that they were created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten that. I'm going to select that move tool again, grab my texture, bring it over and let go. And I'm going to check my bounding box, command T, and they're the same size, which is nice. Say OK. And here what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to change my blending mode to something a little bit unique. Something you don't use all the time, but I like the way Luminosity made this image look. And so here I can see that her shape is coming through a little bit. Now again I'm going to add a layer mask, select a big brush, and I'm going to probably do 30 or 40 percent. Again I'm just typing the number three or four and I'm going to allow a little bit of this through like that. Maybe shrink my brush a little bit and hit it again. So just a little bit more detail. And especially right in her face, right there in that bow. And so this is just a nice way, and I might actually reverse it here. I kind of want a little bit more texture in here. Bring it back. All I did was switch my foreground color back to white, so painting white on, white on white brings the effect back into my photo. And so what I've done here is I've taken a texture and basically created a almost like a painting. Uh, it's a neat effect. I would, I would definitely take the time to experiment with textures, uh, practice on the different blending modes, practice changing the opacity, not only the opacity of your brush, but the opacity of the layer itself. If I drag this to the left, it changes the opacity of the entire layer. And again, um, just experiment with these because they do take a little bit of practice and uh, have fun with your textures.